Hello, I'm Rick Steiner. Welcome to Lux Life Discovered. Our guest today is Christy Matthews with the Jonesboro Radio Group. So Christy, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you very much. I'm excited. It's my very first podcast. And I am not. honored that you, the radio talk show queen of Northeast <laughs> Arkansas, the first podcast is with me. That's great. So thank for you. those who don't know you, kind of give a background of your involvement with radio and, and Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. Sure. So um, I actually uh, grew up in Northwest Arkansas, but came to Jonesboro to go to college and uh, started my full-time radio career in Jonesboro. And uh, in 1990, met my husband uh, as we were putting yellow ribbons on cars during the Gulf War and oh gosh, been yeah. married for 32 years and uh, been on the radio in Jonesboro since 1990 and still love it every day. Well, I do, and you do a great job. In fact, you were the voice for a lot of my um, bridal show commercials when I first started. And I always thought, who's got that Beautiful voice that is so impressive. <laughs> and then I met you and I thought, well, it just makes sense. So yeah. Well, thank you. So what what was your love for radio that what brought you into that? Well, believe it or not, um, I, it's so funny that you asked that. I, someone recently asked me how I got started. And um, my senior year of high school, I had to fill out a one sheet of where I thought I would be in 10 years when I was a senior in high school. And I put down that I wanted to work in advertising. Okay. Um, I was going to be living in a big city, um, which Jonesboro is a big city from compared to where I grew up of a you know, population of 626. But um, oh, wow. I never dreamed I would do uh, be in advertising. I uh, you know, started out in radio, um, really wanted to be in television, did an internship, decided that TV really wasn't where I wanted to be. And so I applied for a, a newsreader job at an AM station in Fort Smith and um, they said, you know, you, you'd be great on the air, you know, to be a, you, know, you should be a DJ. And I said, mm, I don't think so. I think, you know, I want to be a hardcore journalist, you know, I don't want to play music. And so I passed on the job, was driving home and they called me and um, I, I got home that night and I was listening to the DJ on the air and I thought, you know what, that sounds fun. I mean, I could do this for a summer. And that was the beginning of a 35 year career. And I've been on the radio ever since. So it's been a long summer, hasn't it? Yes, the, it yes, has been. and that's it great. Has been. Yeah. Well, and you do. You're such a great communicator, but you're also great with people. You're a great people person, and that makes a huge difference because your clients. That's what they like about you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't hurt to be. Uh, you know, to have a name to be able to walk into a business when you make that transition from air personality to sales. Um, you know, a lot of folks <laughs> in our sales department like, well. You know, if I were Christy Matthews, I could get it. I could get that sale too. But, you know, I had to remind them I still had to go in and sell our business, sell the benefits of using radio to promote their business and grow their, you know, to grow their, their brand. So, you know, you, you may have a name. It may get you in the door, get you that first call, but you've still got to, you've still got to know your business and be able to, sure. to close it. Well, and they expect a little bit higher caliber from you, a little bit more, and you deliver and you do a great job with it. So. Well, thank you. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I never dreamed that I would be in sales. I always thought I would stay in the programming side of things. And I did that for the majority of my career. And I've been doing sales since 2016. Um, and then three years into that, uh, landed the sales manager role. Don't don't ask me how, <laughs> <laughs> but it's worked out. Turns out I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I think you are. Yeah. So what what is it that, that drives you with that? What What surprises you the most about that? Well, you know, I guess it's just, it's, it's been exciting for me and in, in my radio career to watch locally owned businesses grow into these major brands right. um, and to do, be successful and, and just really um, grow our community, watching businesses, you know, mom and pops that, you know, get a second store or they they, they get enough business where they can let somebody else run it and they can actually enjoy life and be with their families more. So that's really been the most exciting part for me is just being able to, you know, to help brand a business, come up with, you know, um, awesome slogans that promote their business, the creative process of it, and really just watching our community blossom over the last 30 years. Well, and you've seen Jonesboro change so much. I mean, it has grown mm -hmm. You know, even at a period of time when a lot of the country, the growth had declined, Jonesboro has always had a steady, you know, upward slope as far as growth and bringing top industries to the county and northeast Arkansas. And so that yeah. has to be rewarding because you guys are essentially a huge part of that. 
Yeah, I, I thank you for saying that. I, I, I agree with it wholeheartedly. I think Jonesboro has been um, insulated, you know, a lot of times whatever, you know, like when COVID hit, yes, obviously our world shut down as well, but our business continued to grow. We saw growth in 2020 um, when a lot of businesses, you know, a lot of, of industries did not, but people, we had to, we had to pivot with our clients because they needed to figure out ways to do business. Right. So we had to change our model of business and come up with unique ideas and ways for them to continue to have profit. Sure, yeah, because no profit. Well, and so many people didn't survive that whole period. A lot of businesses, oh, yeah. yeah, especially smaller businesses that you know were not around anymore, unfortunately. So you, you've got the great position with Jonesboro Radio Group, and we love Jonesboro Radio Group, so I'll just show you. Throw that out there, and Trey, thanks well, thank for letting you. Christy be on today. So, <laughs> but um, so going from like being successful, great family life, and then all of a sudden your world turned upside down. It sure did. Um, in December of 2020, um, I found out that I had cancer, and um, I was—I'll give you a little backstory. I was at my daughter's wedding in August. Um, we had, you know, just the whole. COVID situation, trying to plan a wedding right. uh, was very hard. And we, you know, we, we were forced to either push the wedding into 2021 or pivot and cut our guest list down and change everything. And my daughter, she was, I'm getting married in 2020. <laughs> so we did. And um, I was actually at her wedding and was at her reception and we were visiting with guests and someone called my name and I literally turned like this to respond to someone and my hip fell out of socket. And oh, wow. at that time I didn't know that I had a problem and I just thought, wow, you know, I've been in heels all day. Something's wrong. And um, that kind of set off a chain of events that something was wrong. And um, December 31st, uh, New Year's Eve, I got a call from my doctor after finally getting an MRI that said, you've got a pretty large tumor in your hip and it looks, it looks consistent with cancer and we need to get you in for a PET scan to see what's going on. And it turned out to be multiple myeloma. And um, March of 2021, we, we ended up in Little Rock at UAMS. We're down there about five months, underwent a stem cell transplant. And I mean, we went and we hit it hard. And, um, you know, I was just, I was devastated. I mean, let's, sure. I mean, let's just be honest. I know a lot of people say, you've been such an inspiration. I'm like, well, I appreciate that, but it's been hard. I mean, I don't want to discount how hard, cancer's hard, no matter what kind of cancer whether it's, you know, uh, if it's breast cancer or, you know, there's just, there's a lot I had to learn about cancer. It's made me a more um, compassionate person when people are going through catastrophic illness. It's made me understand the things that I can do to help them, words to say, things not to say, because right. uh, you'd be surprised the, the <laughs> silliest stuff. Pe people want to say something positive, but sometimes they just kind of fumble over that. And, they and they're not sure feeling, what, yeah, and they're not sure what to right. say. And sometimes, sure. What they end up saying is like, you should have just been yeah. quiet. <laughs> I, I say I'm gonna I'm gonna write a book. Stupid things people tell you when you have cancer, um, and I'm editing that a little bit with my language. But um, it's you know, but it's made me realize you know I'm, I always tell people you know you don't have to give me you know. For, number one thing is don't say well my uncle had that and they died. Right. <laughs> don't say <Yeah>. that. <laughs> That's not helpful. Right. Uh, but you know, just say you know, hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for your full recovery. That's all you need to do. You know, can I do something Rude. for you? Yeah. And uh, I had to learn, Rick, really quickly um, how to be the receiver um, of people's blessings. That was really hard for me. And my community rallied around me so in such a huge way. I still I get I get teary. I just thinking about that because they this whole community. I mean, my name was on signs. Pray for Christy. Right. I mean, it I was remember, just, people yeah. were sending All me pictures. social media. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable, and I really had a hard time with that because I was like, there are a lot of people that need more support than me. There's people that are sicker than me, and my my friend Dana told me she said, "You have done so much for this community. Let them help you." Yeah. And so I, I had to. It was hard. That was an adjustment for me. But I always tell people when they get sick, when someone asks you how they can help. Tell them how they can help and then let them do it. And let them bring you suffer. Well, when yeah. you're self or your motivator and, you know, you and I are like, like it's, it's hard to let go and let somebody else do something because you feel like, like you said, there's somebody in a bore situation that could benefit. I can take care of myself, yeah. you know, that type thing. So, but it is, it's yeah. tough, but I understand that. So, 
So when you first got the news, what what was your initial reaction? Well, like, I cried. I mean, I'll just yeah. be completely honest. I I held on to my husband and we cried and we hit our knees and we prayed and we just said, God got us to the right place, to the right people and let us, let us get this taken care of. You know, um, day two, I was, I, I, I don't know if everybody else does this, but I went on to this, you know, you go to that place where it's like, you know, you, you're trying to plan, you know, what if I don't make it, who's going to do this, you know? And I went through that like wow. every human being does and you don't want to, tell people that you went to that dark place, but you, you, that's, you're just, you're human. Um, but I was, I was really empowered by the fact that I just wasn't going to let cancer get me. I mean, yeah. I just said, you know what I am, I was 51 at the time. Um, and I was like, you know, I just, I had a, two, you know, a three-year-old grandson and had another baby grandson coming on the way. And I just was not going to miss out on that. And I just prayed, I said, God, if you'll just let me get through this. I will do everything I can to tell people about you. And, and I will, and I'm going to trust you to put me in the right places. And, you know, there were times where I, I mean, I, I, I did, I shook my fist and, and stomped my feet and asked him, why are you doing this to me? I thought I'm a good person. Why is this happening? And my daughter, who is a worship leader, she said, mama, she said, God didn't give you cancer. You know, quit saying that. And I'm like, well, you know, he's in charge of everything, you know, but <laughs> I had to, I had to, you know, come to the point where, you know, I had to realize that, you know, God leads us to th through things, you know, and he's going to get me through it no matter what, you know, bad things happen to good people all the time. Yeah. And, um, I feel like he put me in a, a position and I had an opportunity and a platform to show people how to try to gracefully walk through it, but be honest and be transparent about it as well. And I tried not to just be all hearts and sunshine all the time. Cause there were right. days where I'm like, listen, I'm struggling and I need y'all. And that, and that takes a lot to admit that, too, especially when you're at that point, you know. Yeah. And, and the people that you met at UAMS and the other people going through similar situations like you or other cancer, uh, types of cancer, how has that affected you, too? Um, well, I've met a lot of people, um, you know, that it, it's cancer patients need to share. They need a group of people that they can um, that they can call on and say, you know, am I feeling this way? Is this normal? Do you feel this way? You know, there's a lot of emotions that come through um, your brain, especially when it gets quiet, when it, nighttime is always the worst for me. Um, and that's when your mind starts working. And, you know, if you, if you allow negative things to get into your mind, it will, it'll take you down in a quick way. And so you have to just be really cognizant of, you know, it's a bad day. It's not a bad life. I can do anything for a little while. And that's one of the things they, they taught me at UAMS was during my treatment. Um, I had three rounds of, of pretty rough chemo leading up to my stem cell transplant. And it was like, you, you're going to feel like crap for 21 days. But on day 22, it's going to climb back up and you're going to get your strength back. So just look at the, you know, and every day they would put a, you know, a smiley face just about this big. And then it'd be a smiley face this big and then this big. And, and they were so right. They, they know what the drugs do to you. They know what to do to get you to that next point. And it's just, it's, it's crazy that they know that, but they, you just have to trust, trust the science and trust the Lord. <laughs> and it's hard to, when you're used to doing it all your own to put that trust in someone else. And it is. Yeah. So. yeah and I, I was blessed. My husband was an incredible caregiver and bless his heart. I, I told him many times during the, the things I said, I know you're having to do things for me that you never dreamed that you would have to, but I'm so <laughs> grateful and I always tell them that, you know, gosh, I don't know if I could be as as giving and loving and kind and supportive as you are because he was a rock. And he, you know, he told me, you know, he said, you know, that's it's it's great that people they see that and they're like, he's so good. And I'm like, yes, he is so good. And he, you know, later on told me, he said, you know, that was a hard thing to, to live up to because there were a lot of people putting expectations on him, you know, yeah. to do all these things. So, you know, the, your caregiver is, you know, they deserve a lot of credit. They really do. That's true. Yeah, I um, volunteered at St. Jude in in Memphis for every Friday for a little over five years, and it was always amazing. Not only the the children there that were going through different types of cancer, but the the results of the treatments. Sometimes that's as hard on the patient as the cancer itself. Sometimes harder. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that yeah. that was something that I was totally blown away by because you think you're getting the the issue taken care of. But there are other issues that can result, and it's 
Right. Just I was just never yeah. expected that. Yeah, side effects are, you know, they can be managed. And if you, if you, but you have to be so open and transparent with your doctor and your caregiver and let them know, because a lot of times, you know, I've been blessed that my, my doctors work really closely together at UAMS and here in Jonesboro for my treatment plan, because I'm still in active chemo right now. Um, I do oral chemo three weeks on one week off. I do a monthly infusion and a monthly injection. And um, I've been this is 37 months that I've been going through this. I mean, I've not had a break on chemo in 37 months. And, um, you know, I've learned to speak up for myself and say, you know, is there, you know, can we lower this dose to maybe knock some of these side effects out without keeping me, you know, kicking me out of remission? And, you know, are there alternatives? And a lot of people just won't ask questions. They won't stand up for themselves. And you have to, you have to be your biggest advocate because you can't, cancer is not one size fits all. And every body is different. Every physical body is different and everybody reacts differently. So just because you took one drug and another person took it and, you know, you were deathly ill and this person just breezed through it, you know, you just have to, you know, just be open and honest with your caregiver and your doctors and say, can, is there something else that can help? Because, you know, neuropathy is a big thing, you know, numbness in your feet and hands. I mean, I've tr I trip over stuff all the time now because I can't really feel my toes right now. And I'm okay. hoping that that changes um, when chemo hopefully comes to an end in August this year. I was going to ask you, so August is the, the end. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I go to UAMS uh, every six months and I was there in February and they gave me the news and, and he said, he said, if you can get to August and stay in remission, we'll stop. And I was like, what? Because when I first started treatment three years ago, I was told that at that time that I would probably take some sort of, sort of chemotherapy for the rest of my life with multiple myeloma. Oh, wow. So that just goes to show you how much advancements in treatments and research yeah. is happening at UAMS to, um, and ever, like I said, there's so many different variations of multiple myeloma. So not everybody gets the same treatment program and some people are on more drugs than others. And some people, you know, are able to stop after, some people don't even do chemo after a stem cell transplant. Um, but I, you know, my, when my doctor said, this is what you need to do, I trusted him. He's the best in the business. And I had no other reason not to, to doubt him. Yeah. Well, that's good. So are you working with the support group? to help others and you're using yes. your platform because you've got the perfect opportunity to have a great platform. Well, and, I, you know, and I, I don't take that lightly. I don't take it lightly. Um, I will tell you, you know, there's a lot of pressure that goes with, um, and I, and I'm, I'm going to sound like a, like just a spoiled brat here, but you know, there are times when I'm just like, I don't want to be your inspiration today. I just, I feel bad. <laughs> I I, I'm tired. I'm going to lay down. I don't feel a hundred percent. I don't, you know, but, you know, but the majority of the time, you know, I, I couldn't find in, and it's not that there are not support groups in Jonesboro. There just wasn't one that fit what I needed at the time. And so um, I was in Dillard's uh, and ran into a couple of friends from church. And um, one of the, I was having a conversation with them about not being able to find the right group for me. And, and one of the ladies, Carol, she said, you know, our church used to have a, a cancer support group. And she said, and I said, Really? And she said, well, maybe you should start one. Right. And Always I was be like, careful what you ask oh. for. <laughs> yeah. And so, and she I said, well, if y'all will help me. And they were both, they're both cancer survivors as okay. well. And they said, absolutely, we will do it. So Carol and Jan were, um, you know, we're standing in the swimsuits at Dillard's and we decided we're going to start a cancer support group. And <laughs> um, so we meet once a month and we have a variety of, of cancer survivors. We have, uh, you know, women that have, uh, are still actively doing chemotherapy for breast cancer. I've got, there's four other women that have multiple myeloma, um, which for one thing, women really shouldn't even have that. I mean, it's, if you look up multiple myeloma, it's typically a male disease over the really? age of 65 and primarily African-American. So, um, I, I had never heard of multiple myeloma and there are four women within 30 miles of me that have been all been diagnosed around the same amount of time. So it's been, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm going to dig into that a little bit more when I get past yeah, this treatment like, because right. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking what's, what's the one thing that we have in common other than, you know, we live in the same area, but right. um, you know, we could give all kinds of conspiracy theories and do those kind of things. <laughs> but then there's obviously something um, that is causing exactly. more women yeah. to come to, to be diagnosed with multiple myeloma, but. But yeah, the, the group's good. Um, it's a faith-based group and we just, we, we share and we 
laugh and we cry. I mean, last a uh, couple nights ago, we we made bracelets. We made prayer bracelets. I mean, we we just want to be there to support one another. There's really no agenda. We we do a a, a faith based Bible study and um, and then we open it up just to to talk about what's going on. Yeah, I appreciate your honesty because I mean, you know, you look at you and you're always smiling. You're always happy, but <laughs> you know. You're right. There are the days where you're just like, hey, I need to just be down today. Leave me alone. Yeah. That's and you know, <laughs> and that's that's just being transparent and that that makes sense. But um yeah. you sure are an inspiration to so many people. And you know, it's really great that you're using your platform and your position where you are to be able to to make a difference because it it'd be easy to focus on you only and you're not doing that, but we appreciate it. Well, I, I, my company has been really good to me. I mean, I've been I've been with Jonesville Radio Group since 1997, and um, you know, Trey Stafford has been uh, just an incredible friend and mentor to me. And and our our company, Saga Communications, they have supported me throughout this whole entire journey. And you know, not just from cancer, just growing in my career. I mean, you know, giving me opportunities to do and be, you know, the best that I can be, and giving me the the tools I need to be that person. And, you know, when I was diagnosed with cancer, I mean, they let me, you know, allowed me to work as much as I could. And that was important to me because I, you know, number one, I'm just a go-getter and I, I and, and I needed, to, I needed to work. I mean, I needed my insurance. I need, I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. I had to have my insurance coverage and you got to work to get that. <laughs> you know, my husband had just started his own business. And so we, for the first time in 29 years, we were on my insurance. It was yeah. just weird how everything played out. I mean, God set everything up. If we look back, why he had to, you know, why he left his job to start his own business so he could be Who off and be able to yeah. take care. Yeah. It just, it didn't make sense at the time. We were scared to death, but you know, it was, it was all part of the plan. The plan, the plan was written and we just had to write it out. All right. And one part of the whole journey that really probably took its hardest toll on you was what? Mm, just God made me slow down. Okay. I mean, he, yeah. you know, it, 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 he forced me to say, you know what, you are not in charge. You, you know, you know, you may think you are. And I had to get out of God's way a lot. I had to, you know, I, I would like, you know, I would allow him to push me in ways. And then I would be like, mm, I got this. I don't need you right now. You know? <laughs> And so that probably more than anything is being able to trust and lean on him a hundred percent and not when it was convenient. Yeah. And that's tough when you're the personalities that we have, cause we, we can do it all. Yeah. 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 It's like, I got this. Yeah. You, there's other people that need you right now. I got you, but yeah. that's not what he wants. He wants us to need him all the time. Right. And, and that's what I learned. That's what I learned. Go to him with different things. And it's like, okay, just in case you forgot, I know you've got a lot of things on your mind. Just let me remind you. <laughs> He's like, yeah. just shut up. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we're so <laughs> full of ourselves that sometimes we just need to be that. We just need to be slapped down and say, you know, Hey, you, Set in, you, they put us in our place. That's put us true. In our place. Yeah. yeah. So, well, it's great that you've been able to work, continue to to grow with your company there with the Jonesboro Radio Group because I, you didn't. That kind of kept you as a motivating factor too, as well. You didn't let that slack in the process. You maintained yeah. and and still continue to grow which I right. think probably you know, helped you as well, right? Oh, yeah. It gave me some focus and purpose because otherwise I would have just been sitting there feeling sorry for myself. And, you know, I, um, I, I you know, it's, it, I've had more of our, our staff tell me, you know, I hate to even say, you know, I don't feel good today. I'm not going to come in. And then you're sitting there <laughs> doing chemo while you're working. Like I had an infusion today and I'm sitting here and I'm working and I've got a needle in my arm and I'm just working along. And they're like, oh, well, great. You know, I'm like, <laughs> can't no, call in today because Christy's there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, you know, and I don't want people to think that their their sickness or their illness is less than and how you because I mean, if you feel bad, you feel bad. But that's just my personality. And, you know, I'd rather get it done during the work day. And, and you know, I'm going to be here anyway. Right. <laughs> so. That's true. That's true. Well, I see what we're going to put your information on the screen. That way, if anybody wants to contact you, they can reach out to you about your journey or any questions that you can help them with. So absolutely just tell them if you don't mind, just go through the, yeah. I mean, you can, you can visit me at uh, my email address is Christy at Jonesboro radio group.com. Or if you just go to Jonesboro radio group.com, there's links, my phone, my phone numbers on there. My cell phone's there. You, I mean, I've had more people call me out of the blue and just say, listen, I, I've just got a cancer diagnosis. 
get, can you give me any advice? I am open. I'm an open book. And um, the, our cancer survivors group, that is a, that is a private page, but if you find me, I'll, I'll get you in there. We'd love to have you. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I feel blessed that I'm doing well. I'm, I'm, you know, treatment's going well. And, you know, I just want to pay it forward. I want to pay it forward. Well, and you definitely will. And that's great. And thank you for your time today. And thank you for everything you do in Jonesboro Radio Group for the community, because you guys, like I said, have been a huge part of the success that Northeast Arkansas has experienced. And it's because of you, because of Trey and a dedicated team that puts it all together. Thank you, Rick, for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. You're welcome. That concludes our episode of Lux Life Discovered, and we will see you soon.